The island of Sodor is a busy place to visit. You can see engines and diesels pulling passengers and freight to the destinations. One of these engines is Neville, the Q1 class engine. Neville has worked on the island for a few years now and works as a mixed goods engine alongside his new friend Rudolph. Today's going to be a good day for us, isn't it, Murdoch? Oh, for certain it will. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Neville. I would like you to pick up a goods train from Wellsworth and take it to the mainland. Yes, sir. And as for you, Murdoch, normal jobs as usual. Yes, sir. And the fat controller left. Murdoch was happy for his friend. Now that's the perfect job for a really useful engine like you, Neville. Thanks, Murdoch, my friend, but I must go now. I can't keep my train waiting. Neville puffed away from the sheds and towards Maithwaite. Neville puffed happily through the countryside. He couldn't wait to get to Wellsworth Yard to pick up his goods train. I mustn't be late with my train, or else I will let the back controller down. And he carried on towards Wellsworth. Neville arrived at Wellsworth Yard to collect his goods train. He noticed a green diesel waiting at the platform. Neville didn't know who the diesel was, and was worried that he might tease him too, like the other diesels did to him on his old railway. Oh dear, I can't have another diesel come over and tease me again. Now where are they? Um, are you looking for something, Neville? Oh, sorry, Philip. I was just looking for my goods train. Is something wrong? Oh, no, no, I'm fine, Philip. Okay, then. Well, your train is over here. Follow me! But what Neville didn't know was that the green diesel waiting at the platform was Boko, one of the friendly diesels on Sodor. But Neville didn't know about that, and he was still a little worried. Thank you, Philip. No problem, Neville. Now where are those tankers? Neville was ready to go and was just about to leave when he saw that Boko was having a problem with his own. The trucks were being troublesome, and they were off to their old tricks again. Hold back! Hold back! Oh, you'll be quiet, you silly trucks. You've already given me enough trouble this morning. Neville could see that Boko was struggling to move his trucks out of the platform and was still worried. Oh my. I hope those trucks don't give him too much trouble. While Neville was watching Boko and his trucks, Duck popped up beside him. Hello, Neville. Are you alright? Oh, hello, Duck. Yes, I'm fine. Uh, thanks for asking. Then Duck noticed that Neville was staring at Boko, who was getting ready to leave the train. It could see that Neville was worried about something. Hey, Duck. Who's that green diesel over there? Oh, that's Boko. He's not like other diesels who work here. Boko is one of the friendliest diesels on the island. He sometimes helps out on Edward Branch Line with heavy goods. While Edward is away with his passenger train. But once you get to know him, you can be his new friend. Thanks, Duck. And you know, I would like to be Boko's friend. But I don't know how. But Neville's chance came sooner than expected. Boko was about to leave with his train when Neville popped up next to him with confidence. Kind Diesel then smiled at him. Hello there. I've never seen such a splendid engine like you. I bet you're a really useful engine, just like the rest of us. Oh, yes. I am, uh, Mr. Um. Oh, please. Call me Boko. And who might you be? My name is Neville. I'm a Southern Railway Q-Class tender engine, and it's nice to meet you, Boko. Well, it's very nice to meet you too, Neville. Then Boko noticed that Neville looked worried about something, so he decided to ask him. Are you okay, Neville? You seemed worried about something. Yes, I, I, I'm okay. It's just that 
I've never met such a kind and friendly diesel like you before. The other diesels on my old railway would always tease me because of my square body and how it makes me look like a diesel. I see. Well, don't worry about that. Me and the other engines will keep you safe and sound from those devious diesels. Thank you, Boko. I don't know what I could have done without you. Oh, that's all right. It's like what I say. Friends gotta stick together, you know. Now that I can agree. Oh, definitely. Well, it was nice chatting to you, Neville. But I better get going. These trucks can't get to the docks on their own. See ya. And with that, Boko rolled away to the docks. Just then, Eric arrived to see him. Hello there, Neville. Oh, hello there, Edward. I see you've met Boko. Oh yes, he's one of the kindest and friendliest diesels I've ever met. In fact, he's the first kind diesel I've ever met, actually. Why's that? Well, it happened back on my first day here on Sodor. I was still new at the time, and didn't know much about the railway and I was soon put to work to take passengers and freight about. The Diesels, who I worked with, always had an addiction of teasing me because of my shape and how it makes me look like a Diesel, when technically I'm not. Well, you're not a Diesel. Just because your body is square like a Diesel and how you were teased about it, it didn't stop from being a really useful engine. Because that's where you are, Neville, and you will always be a really useful engine. Thank you, Edward. No wonder you're known as a wise old engine. Well, that's why I was referred to as that. Because sometimes I have to make wise decisions about certain things, you know, to make sure everyone is safe and sound. The center package arrived on Winston. He had come to see them. Ah, Neville, there you are. What is it, sir? I forgot to tell you that tomorrow you will be helping out Gordon with the express down in Nafford, as we are getting more and more holiday makers visiting Sodor for the next few days. So it will be too much for Gordon to handle. So are you up for that? Oh, yes, sir. Anything to help out Gordon with his express trains. Good to hear. Now before I go, Edward, I would like you to cover the rest of Neville's jobs for the rest of the afternoon. After all, Neville needs to be up early in order to help out Gordon with the express tomorrow. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Now I have to go now. I mustn't be late for my important meeting. And the Fat Controller got back into Winston, and he drove away. Thanks for covering the rest of my jobs for me, Edward. I needed an extra helping wheel with me so that I can get ready for tomorrow. Ah, oh, that's alright, Neville. I'm just happy to help a friend out. Well, I must go now. This goods train can't wait any longer. See ya! Bye, Neville. Safe travels. And Neville popped away with his good strength in the mainland. As he was popping on towards the mainland, he was thinking about his friend Edward. Edward is such a kind and wise old engine. He always makes me feel more relaxed and gives me the courage to be a brave and stick up for myself. And Neville popped proudly on with his good strength. That night, Neville was resting his wheels and cooling his boiler after a long day's work. He was telling the other engines all about his day. You know, Edward is such a nice engine to go and ask for advice when things are difficult. Well, Sodor wouldn't be the same without a wise engine like Edward. Agreed. It just wouldn't feel right without him. I know. Anyways, I heard you met Boko at Wellsworth today. Oh, I did. At first, I didn't know who he was or what he was doing there. He was quite friendly, to be honest. And, you know, he also reminds me of those diesels that worked with me on my old railway. And they acted... The complete opposite of Boko. In what kind of way would you say? Well, it's a bit of a long story. Would you like to hear it? Of course, whenever you're ready. 
Okay, then. So this is what happened. It all started. I was back on my old railway. I worked with a couple of diesels, which weren't exactly the kind diesels you want to work with. They were rude, boastful, and of course, loved teasing the other engines on my old railway too. I knew I couldn't stand their teasing, and I wanted to start a new chapter of my life. And then, that's when I got my chance. Wow, that's amazing so far. But my question is, how did you come to Sodor in the first place? Well, let me tell you how. When my railway was closing down, I knew that I wasn't being used as much because the passengers decided to travel more by the buses, and this started to affect my railway in many ways. So when I told my controller about the changes that was going on, he decided that this was the end of the line for me, and he had decided to leave me in the workshop for a long time. How awful. Yeah, an engine like you shouldn't be left in the workshop, especially for a long amount of time. I know. But after being stuck in the workshop for about a month, I noticed a smartly dressed man with a black top hat. He told me his name was the Fat Controller, and he asked me that if I can work hard on his railway, he said he would purchase me, and would have me join his railway as a mixed traffic engine. And here I am till this very day. Well, at least you weren't sent to the scrapyard. That would have been a lot worse. Well, we all learn things in life, just like how I learned to gain my confidence on newcomers, or anyone who I think might tease me. The other engines agreed, and one by one the engines fell asleep for the next day to come. The next morning, Neville was at Naffa with Gordon. They were waiting for Thomas and Percy to bring their coaches to the platforms. Oh, listen here, Neville. This is your first time pulling the express with me, so I hopefully you'll know what you're doing. Of course I know what I'm doing, Gordon. I shouldn't have any problems. Then Aria Bird arrived at Nefford and began to laugh. Hi, look there, Bert. It's our old friend, Mr. Clumsy Wheels. Yeah, and it looks like he's going to be pulling the Biff Back Express with the blue teapot over there. Yeah, Clumsy Wheels will ruin the Blue Teapot's beautiful express coaches, and he'll give the passengers such a stuck-up ride. <laughs> that made Neville feel more worried, and this made Gordon feel cross. He had enough with Arian Burt's teasing. You know, if you two don't have anything nice to say about Neville, then I suggest that you go back to the silly ironworks or wherever you're working at the moment, and leave us alone. Instead of making rude comments about us for making fun of the way we look. And if you can't follow that, then we will drag your innocent looking buffers back to the smelters where you think you two personally belong. Harry and Bird suddenly went quiet and they rushed back to the people. Thanks for standing up for me, Gordon. My pleasure, Neville. Anything to help my friends, especially my new friends like you. At last, Thomas and Percy arrived with their coat and Then the pastors climbed quickly aboard. Now, take it easy, Devil. Don't listen to what Ari and Bert said. They're trying to make you feel bad. Don't worry, Gordon. I will. So when all the pastors were aboard Neville's coaches, he wished to see them carefully out of the station. Neville was making good time with his master train and made it to all of the stations on time. The fat controller was pleased with him. Well done, Neville. You made it to all the stations right on time. Thank you, sir. Now I would like you to return the empty coaches back to Napa for me. Yes, sir. And Neville popped away to return the empty coaches back to Napa. As he was heading back, he was starting to remember what Harry and Bert said to him. What if Harry and Bert are right? What if I am this clumsy wheels? What if I was trying to ruin the express for Gordon? Maybe I shouldn't have come to work on Sodor. 
Nell was so busy thinking about what Airy Bird had said to him that he wasn't looking where he was going. And he didn't see that the signal had turned to red. And he popped straight through it! But Neville didn't know that and popped on. Meanwhile, Stan Lee was waiting at a junction. He was making a delivery for the docks and had to stop at the junction to let Gordon pass through the express. I hope I don't have to wait here for too long. After all, this delivery can't be late for the docks. Race past Stanley with the empty express coaches. Stanley was surprised. Whoa, Neville, slow down. You won't make it around that sharp bend up ahead. Sharp bend? What did he mean by that? And Neville saw a sharp turn on the tracks and he put on his brakes hard, but it was too late. Luckily no one was hurt, but Neville now felt silly for going so fast. Just then Percy was passing by when he saw that Neville had come off the tracks. Neville, are you okay? What happened? Yes, I'm fine, Percy. I was just being careless, and I wasn't paying attention because I was too busy thinking about what Arian Bird had said to me. Don't worry, Neville. I will go and get help. So Percy raced up to collect Rocky from the rescue center, and it wasn't long until Percy came back with Rocky. Don't worry, Neville. I'll have you back on the track in no time. Thank you, Rocky. Then the Fat Controller arrived. He wasn't happy with Neville. Neville, what were you thinking? Speeding past the red signal and slowing down at the bend? You know you should always follow the speed limits and always stop at the signals instead of racing through them. I'm sorry, sir. Percy could see that Neville was in trouble with the Fat Controller, and he knew he had to speak up for him. Sir, don't blame Neville for this accident. And why is that, Percy? Neville isn't the one to blame for this accident, sir. Please don't be mad at him. The Fat Controller listened carefully. Well, when I saw that Neville was in distress beside the bend, I could tell in his mind that something wasn't sitting right with him. And once I remembered Thomas told me about how Ari and Bert had been horrible to him when he first came here, so that's why Neville wasn't following the safety guidelines, sir. It wasn't his fault. I see. Well, thank you for telling me this, Percy. I think I need to have a word with those two. But in the meantime, I would like you to take Neville to the works so he can be checked over for any scrapes and scratches. Oh, yes, sir. At last. Rocky lured Neville carefully onto the flatbed. There you go, Neville. Thanks again, Rocky. So when Neville was placed on the flatbed, Percy pulled him carefully to the works. That night, Thomas and Percy were alone at the sheds. They were talking about their day when Neville arrived back from the works. Welcome back, Neville. Yes, welcome back indeed. Thanks, you two. Right. Are you okay, Neville? You still look worried about something. Yeah, Percy was telling me that you had an accident earlier. Yeah, I'm fine. It's just that I can't get Arian Bert's rude thoughts out of my funnel. I know I may seem like a clumsy engine to them on my first day here, but I've become a really useful engine after you saved me from the broken bridge, Thomas. Oh, I remember that. I also remember that I was crossing you for the wrong reason. But no matter what I do to try to improve my chances of staying on Sodor, it just seems like Ari and Bird don't even care about me being here in the first place. Oh, don't listen to them, Neville. They're just trying to make you look bad just because you made a mistake on your first day here. Thomas is right. Just because your shape makes you look like a diesel doesn't mean that you could still work hard with the other engines on this island. Even us as well. Neville had to agree with Percy. After all, actions do speak louder than words, he thought. But Neville didn't mind anymore and he didn't feel worried anymore. And the next day, Neville was feeling happier than ever, and he wasn't bothered by any of the diesels. And, and even if they were diesels lurking about, they knew not to mess with them or else they would have the unexpected happen to them instead. And 
As for Eric and Bert, well, the Fat Controller had sent them to their sheds for a week so they could think about what they did to Neville and they could possibly fix their actions. I think that would teach them a lesson about trying to mess with the wrong engine. What do you think?